Oh yes. There will be blood. Greetings, my brothers and sisters of darkness. In the year of our lord, 2018, I had an idea. I wanted to paint some serial killers. I wanted to make it a big project, so I chose 8 serial killers with pretty high fame factor. And I got to work, and afterwards I felt pretty good about myself. So the years went by, I developed my art skills, and finally in 2022 I took a look at the old painting, and a voice said in my head... You suck! Okay, maybe it was not that bad, but still, I felt that I wanted to try the same motif again, now that several years had passed. First I made an underpainting with diluted oil colors, just to get the general shapes in order. In this process you can also use acrylics, or you can skip this process altogether. I believe I did when I made the first version. The reason why I do this is because if you start to apply colors directly on a white canvas, they look darker than they actually are. So it's a good idea to first make an underpainting with some basic raw umber, or brown red in this particular case. In general, I wanted to focus on the colors red, brown and pink, so I just planned the painting accordingly. When I was planning the original version, I was thinking of a human heart in the center. It was supposed to symbolize the heart of darkness, the core of evil, or something to that effect. I was thinking of putting the heart in a baroque frame in order to give it a semi-gothic look. It wasn't until the painting was actually finished that I realized that the frame took attention away from the portraits. So in the new one I skipped the frame altogether and let the heart sort of blend between the portraits instead. As for the background, my thoughts for both of the paintings was to make it look like blood in order to symbolize the violence of their lives. In the original I just used an ordinary brush for the background and then splashed the colors in order to make blood splatter effects. For the new version I decided to use a palette knife instead to make it look like it explodes from the portraits. It took several layers in order to get the feeling right but in the end I think I got it how I wanted it. My first degenerate who had the honor of being painted was Richard Ramirez, the so-called Night Stalker, convicted of 13 murders and additional assaults. My aim for all the portraits was, of course, to present the people as accurately as possible, but not necessarily photorealistic. Instead, I wanted to add small details to make them more gritty and gave myself permission to make changes if I wanted to. For example, you can see I'm adding more wrinkles than Ramirez has on the reference photo. I also put on sharp red on the eyes to make them stand out more and enhance the evil look, so to speak. And as you will see, I did it on all the other portraits as well. Next one, John Wayne Gacy, convicted of 33 murders, most of whom buried in his basement. This one started pretty okay. But after a while it became difficult to make a balance between wrinkles and the grittiness. The reference was a mugshot when Gacy was in his 30s, and he also was a bit chubby, which decreased the number of natural wrinkles. But his mouth and jaw had pretty rough features, so I decided to focus on that, as well as the few wrinkles he had between the eyes. Compared to the original painting, he came off as a little more intimidating at least. Eileen Vornos, one of the relatively few female prolific serial killers from the United States, convicted of the murder of six men, or Johns. Vornos has a face with strong features, the sign of a hardened and difficult life. This made it a challenge to accurately depict her and making her feminine at the same time. So in this portrait I decided to not sharp her facial features too much, like the previous two. Instead of adding wrinkles, I decided to make the skin a little more raggedly with the palette knife. The first try, I wasn't very happy with it at all. The skin was a little too raggedly, the colors didn't come off as I wanted, and she didn't look like the actual Warnos. So I ab abandoned it for the moment and decided to finish it later when it had dried, and when I got a little distance to it. Edmund Kemper, convicted of the murder of 10 people in total, with an IQ of 145 and not using it for the better of civilization, so he's a perfect example of total waste of human intellect. 
This portrait was not a particularly interesting face to paint. In the reference photo he doesn't have any sharp facial features at all, so again I focused on the grittiness of the eyes and the skin. Halfway through I realized I should have waited with the palette knife until the finishing touches, but I guess I just got too impatient and carried away. The infamous BTK killer, revealed to be Dennis Raider, could have been a legendary unsolved mystery if it hadn't been for his imbecilic ego. Read about his arrest, it's a fun story of its own. In the original painting I had so much trouble with this one. It didn't go any better this time. I took one of the more well-known reference photos and thought it would be fine. The first sketch seemed fine, but when I started painting the proportions just weren't balanced in the area of the no mouth and nose. The facial features were too small and the forehead too big. I thought the palette knife would even the arts when mapping out the skin, but it felt it was just getting worse. Just like with the Bornos portrait, I felt I wasn't getting the result I wanted, so this time I also felt that I would try course correction later when it was time for the highlights. Next it's Andrei Chikatilo, is that even the way how to pronounce it? The Soviet serial killer convicted of 52 murders. After the Dennis Rader portrait, this one went so smoothly. Chikatilo's got an interesting face, very intense, so his portrait almost painted itself. His eyes are so energetic, and his features are so... Is the word well polished the right word for a serial killer? Anyway, during the process I felt I didn't have to add so much, but rather just enhance the features already present. Very grateful indeed. Ah yes, our favorite cannibal nutcase Jeffrey Dahmer, convicted of 16 murders and all kinds of additional sodomizing behavior. This one went pretty good too. The eyes didn't go exactly as I wanted, and I noticed after a while that the jaw and chin was a little too bulky, but later when I put on the highlights and details it went better. Maybe I should have made the eyes just a little bit darker, but later I added a little more light to the left eye, which changed it for the better. And finally, Ted Bundy, who confessed to 30 murders, not to mention several cases of post-mortem debauchery. I think I got the face pretty much how I wanted. I deliberately made his facial features stronger in order to enhance the evil look on him. Not too many wrinkles though, and the reason is that I felt that it wasn't needed for Bundy. This portrait was also a grateful task, since everything went pr pretty smoothly. Especially if you compare to the old version, where the face is just off. And finally, the highlights, the most satisfying part in any project. By this time, Kemper's portrait was dry, so it was easy to adjust the skin colors and make highlights on the glasses and eyes. Same with Warnos, adjusting some small shadows and the brightest highlights, and after that I was pretty satisfied with the end result. With Raider, I tried to emphasize the eyes and glasses and some small wrinkles, the best course correction I could think of. It still didn't come off exactly as I wanted, but better than initially at least. Not too many highlights uh, I needed to add on Chikatilo, just some small, small, small details that hardly anyone would notice except me. Dahmer's left eye needed to be a little more clear, but apart from that, just some small details on the jaw and chin. With Gacy, I just corrected some shadows and some highlights to smooth the skin. And with Bundy, small, barely noticeable wrinkles that needed adjustments. And finally, it took about 13 hours in total to complete this. Personally, I'm more satisfied with the new version. It's more gritty, it encapsulates the dark aesthetics I'm going for, and it reflects in what direction I'm striving to develop my art. However, I do think the original version is a little more smooth in some of the portraits, and in some areas it was good that I wasn't carried away with the details. But overall I prefer the remake. So, what do you think? Is the new one in an improvement, or do you prefer the old one? Feel free to share your opinions in the comment section, and if you want to see more tutorials in the future, feel free to subscribe. And until next time, make sure you look over your shoulder when you're walking home in the dark.